All right, gang, the last thing that we're going to do with these inverses is find them algebraically. This is probably the most important thing in this section to be able to do. The rest of it's all nice and dandy, but this is the one that um, you find yourself needing to do more than off, more often than not. So here's what you're going to do in order to uh, find the inverse algebraically. Your first step is to just take the x and the y and swap. So if you have y equals blah, 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 you're going to make it x equals and then everything else in terms of y. Then you're going to solve the equation for y, which means get y equals and then all the x's on the other side. And the new equation that you get is the inverse. And that's all there is to it. Remember, though, that not every function has an inverse. I don't think they're going to give you one that you need to solve that doesn't have an inverse. I think that'd be kind of mean, but I sure as heck could. No. Um, all right, let's do an example. Here is our function. I promise you it's coming. There it is. 5 minus 3x all over 2. First step. Swap the x and the y. So that means it's going to look like this. x equals 5 minus 3y over 2. Step 2, solve the equation for y. So you're just doing run-of-the-mill algebra to get the equation so that it looks like y equals. So I would multiply by 2 first. I would, since I have a negative 3y, I'm going to bring the negative 3y to the other side and bring the 2x over so it looks like this. And then I would divide everything by 3. And lo and behold, that is the equation of the inverse. And if you wanted to, you could think of it as 5 thirds minus 2 thirds x. That is the inverse. Okay, so swap the x and the y. Solve for y. What you have left is your inverse. Let's try another one. All right. We have the cube root of 10 plus x. First step, swap your x and your y. So we have x equals the cube root of 10 plus y. Second step, solve for y. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is cube both sides, and then I would subtract 10, and what you're left with is the equation of the inverse, x cubed minus 10. That's it. It's pretty simple to find those inverses. Well, heck, that's the end of that section. 1, 9 is done. Adios.